I hope you've enjoyed the music, and I hope you're enjoying the Lord especially, and let the words of the music and the words that are in the Bible speak to you. Um, now I'm going to be reading from Genesis chapter 37, and we're going to pick up kind of where we were last week, where Joseph's brothers were angry with him, and we'll see what happens. This is starting with verse 12. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are you, as you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I am going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brother, and see if it's all well with the flocks. And then bring the word back to me. Then he sent him off to the valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering about the fields and asked him, What are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here. The man answered, I have heard them say, I will go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But when they saw him in the distance, before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal had devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. So we can see last week they got angry. And this week they've gotten so angry that that is fermented within them that they're willing now to kill him just because they're angry with what he's said and what he's done. It shows what the human heart is like and it shows that these are God's chosen people. These are ones out of the Bible from which the um, tribes of Israel came. And yet they've let anger build up in their hearts and it's festered into something like this. They're willing to kill him because of their anger. Now I'm going to read from Romans chapter 11, verses 33. Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom of and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments. And his, pay, and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that which, he should re, which God should repay him? For from him and through him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. So in this we see that God is the source of all things and sometimes people think they're doing God a favor and we find that God has given us everything. What he wants is not us to do favors for him but to spend time with him. We owe him our very existence if we were to try to measure those kinds of things. But he doesn't look at it that way. He absolutely loves us and wants to bless us if we'll just let him. Now we find that Jesus is talking to the um, disciples and he's talking also with the Pharisees. And the Pharisees have have um, given him some problems because they don't spend their time in ceremonial washing because they were very concerned with what was on the outside of, and the appearance of human behavior but Jesus called the crowd into him and said listen and understand what goes into a man's mouth does not make him unclean but what comes out of his mouth is what makes him unclean then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when you heard this, when they heard this? 
He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, Explain the parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see what enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart and make a man unclean. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. These are what makes a man unclean, but eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. So we can see that the Pharisees are really concerned about their ceremony. Now today's world, and especially now that we're in the COVID-19 world, we're always washing our hands, or we're supposed to be. But that does not make us, if we do or do not, it does not make us unclean in God's sight. We don't have to be the cleanest, sparkliest person in the world, or the most ceremoniously clean, the, the one that showers three times a day, to be, to be clean in God's sight. And conversely, the people who are so worried about appearing so good are not necessarily clean on the inside. The Pharisees were really concerned about what people thought about the way they dressed, the way they lived, the way that they spoke. And yet they somehow missed the whole point of loving God with all their heart, soul, and might, and loving their neighbor as themselves. Now Jesus had a spiritual presence about him that some people were, were able to pick up right away. But the Pharisees didn't see it at all. They thought he was just a wandering teacher at best. But something that he was saying was aggravating what was inside because inside they had some real problems. I've brought some containers here. Now I've got these squirt bottles with various things in them. And you can put anything you want in them and remove it and put it in. But for us, what comes out is what makes the difference. Now this one has a bacteria in it. We may think this is awful. This is terrible. But this is a bacteria that won't harm me but for the caterpillars that get on my flowers and in my broccoli, this is deadly. And it kills tomato hornworms and um, the little um, caterpillars that get on the sunflowers. And I don't want to kill all the caterpillars because that's where we get our butterflies. But I want to kill the ones that are being destructive. And so to me, this is pretty harmless. But what comes out of here can be deadly to those caterpillars. And, and I have to be real careful because we've got some um, beneficial caterpillars that of, of butterflies that we really want around. And so i got to be careful I don't hit them with this because this is deadly to them. And in here it says salt and vinegar, but that's not what this is. Um, this is just soap and water. And you can use this to clean with, or you can use it to um, to kill insects. You spray this on a grasshopper; they ring around, they writhe around like a like a kid that you're trying to give a bath to. They don't like the soap and water any more than the kid who doesn't like baths. But for them, this is deadly because it blocks their breathing. And so this makes a good insecticide. It's not perfect, but it will kill them, but you can also use it for cleaning. And this is uh, oil that we use for cooking. Our daughter got this for us, and so when we want to put olive oil on something, instead of 
glugging it on, we can just squirt it on and save the oil and then not overuse it. And uh, especially if you get the really good oil, it's a little expensive. And uh, you don't get too much on and it makes it so that your food is a little less heavy sometimes. So on all these containers, it doesn't matter what I write or do on the outside. I can clean these, I can throw them in the dirt, and set them in a dirty uh, puddle, and it won't affect at all what happens on the inside. Conversely, I can have dirty water or um, germs that are harmful to us, or I can have um, caustic chemicals in here that would burn our skin. And it doesn't matter how much I clean the outside of this, it's still going to be caustic. And if it's deadly bacteria to us, it's still going to be deadly. It doesn't matter what's on the outside, it's on the in, what's on the inside. And that's the point that God was getting to us with the story of Joseph and his brothers. Now Joseph had done some things to annoy and anger his brothers and they could have done some things back as brothers do to annoy back. But instead they took it to another level because of their hearts they wanted to go ahead and kill him because they were jealous and angry with him for what he had said. As far as we know he hadn't done anything of any great harm but was just really annoying and tough to live around. We have to be careful with our hearts because they can tend to be like the Pharisees where we think we're doing everything right but we're drifting away from God. God gives us his word and I hope you listen to the word and, and read it on to your own, read it on your own um, today because it's God's word that acts as our guide to see what's going on in our heart. As we open the Bible and we read the words, it speaks to our heart. It's a lamp to our heart. So today, let God work in your heart. Let him get rid of those things which are caustic to the community you live in or maybe um, repulsive to God because they're so against the way he wants you to live. He doesn't want us to repent just so that we'll feel bad about ourselves or feel guilty. He wants us to let him work in our hearts so that we can experience the joy of his presence, so that we can experience the joy of the presence of other people. Because when we're living right with God, our life will be something that will appeal to others who are seeking God and will feel the fellowship that runs deeper than just friendship, that fellowship that is spiritual and beyond that which is something that the world experiences. So let's let God work in us. Let him show us what needs to be filled in our heart. Let the oil of the Holy Spirit soothe us and work in us today and heal us. Amen.